Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and I played a lot of No Man's Sky. I really like the game mechanics in the game, and I, th I think the end game of the game is really fun. I like the pacing of grinding for loot. I mean, I spent eight hours on a spaceship, and it's like, it felt like those eight hours really meant something. I, I took a spaceship and I fixed it up so that it could haul a bunch of cargo. Oh, oh! Guys, if you can, get a spaceship that holds stuff. Just do it. It doesn't matter if you get blown up a bunch. Do it. But I want to talk about the biggest shortcoming of No Man's Sky. Uh, because I think, you know, I put on my current file about 50 hours into it. And I can safely say that I, I really like the end game of No Man's Sky. But a problem has come up with No Man's Sky where exploration is still very boring in the game. You know, that... It was one of the things that you came up to... If you first played No Man's Sky when it first came out, the exploration of it really, really didn't go very well. Like, you'd find a planet, and you'd find another planet, you'd find another planet, you'd find another planet, and you'd really just scan stuff to get credits to pay for oxygen. That's all you really did it for. You didn't really do it for much. And then they came out with the nanite system, and then you'd scan stuff for nanites to get suit upgrades. But then the nanites are kind of not balanced, right? So you got too many nanites. So they finally made it down so that it's like, okay, you're on a planet with nine life forms. You're going to get a big nanite boost if you find all nine life forms. But the problem I'm finding myself running into when it comes to No Man's Sky is exploring is very, very boring. Like, there's a core type of planets, and there's really a core set of plants. Like, you guys know, like, if I told you about, like, uh palm trees. There's a lot of palm trees on a bunch of different planets in No Man's Sky. The animals... I feel like the only animals that really matter, the ones that you find and you're like, whoa, it's so cool, is the big ones. Like, birds, right? You never see birds and they all look the same. And you're like, oh, that's a different species of bird. Okay. Or fish are kind of actually very cool to see because there's different types of jellyfish and piranha type and eels. But, like, land animals, the only ones that are really cool are the big ones. You know, the small ones really don't matter. And I think it'd be kind of cool if they expanded upon that more. And expanded on the planet variety and the terrain variety. Because if you play No Man's Sky, all the game looks like is you go to a planet and it's, like, bumpy mountains. There's not really a lot of planets. There's a couple of them. But not a lot of them where it's, like... The only feature is this giant freaking cliff crev crevice, crevasse, whatever you want to call it. Like, there's a planet, it's all flat, and then there's just one crevice. Or, uh, I found a water world once that was covered in water except for the tiniest of islands. That was cool. Uh, island planets are still, like, bumpy. It's like, whoa, you're on an island planet, it's got bumpy hills. You're in a desert planet, bumpy hills. There's floating islands, but I don't feel like the floating islands aren't that cool. Uh, like, I wish there was more extreme terrain, and I wish there was weird terrain. Like, I wish there was a there was terrain, it was like a floating bubble of water. Right? Or uh, some area where it stormed more often. Or some area that it was a constant storm. Right? Because, like, when it comes to different hazards, right? Let's say um, toxic, heat, cold, radioactive. You're all just, at the end of the day, all you're doing is shoving sodium into your spacesuit. No matter what planet you land on, you're just shoving sodium. And, like, if I land on a radioactive planet, there's not really anything I'm going to find there. Like, it's not like I'm going to find more uranium on a radioactive planet. Or if I go to a heat planet. There's not a lot of, like, molten iron. Like, what if there's iron lava? That'd be cool. Or, like, if I go to a frozen world, there's dioxetate. Or there, there's some resources where it's, like, dioxide, uh, frost crystals, and, like, on a heat world, there's selenium. But a lot of the minerals that you use, like, uh, iron, not iron, why did I say iron? Chromatic metal, copper. That's, copper's everywhere. Emeralds everywhere on the emerald stars uh indium cadmium like it's all there 
And the unique resources you get are just kind of like for plants. I don't even know what the plants are used for, so I, I don't know how valuable different types of plants are yet when it comes to gardening, but I feel like there's not enough variety to keep me going in this game because I like being able to build a base for like 20 hours and like, I'm gonna explore and try to find something new. Like, there's nothing new to find, you know? There's new stuff to do, which is really cool. I like having new stuff to do. And now I just feel like it would be nice to balance it out with new stuff to see in the game. And that's what I hope that, uh, the de I hope as a fan of No Man's Sky, the developers improve on next is that there is more to see in the game and potentially more to do maybe buying giant armadas beyond just one freighter maybe 10 freighters I don't know I, I feel like as a player I really like to stash resources and I can't do a full-on like million freaking chromatic metal in one spaceship even though I think you can do that but yeah, so that's it for this video. Um, that's all I had to say on it. What do you think of No Man's Sky? Is it improving for you? Is it not? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I decide to make.